What's good, Paulie? Gang, 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 gang. It's your boy, KC. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm reacting to Elvis Presley. Gave away 200 Cadillacs. This is part two out of the four little documentaries. Um, it's like a mini series. So I watched part one a while ago. And um, it's been a while since I like got back to the series. And I wanted to finish it. So this is part two of that documentary. And part one was pretty good. It was just pretty much showing like Elvis is like a great performer, a great singer. He made a lot of songs that a lot of us remember today, but he also gave away a lot of stuff to other people. So it's not just about what he did on the stage, but it's about what he did off the stage. So it's just about Elvis as a person, um, the type of person he was. And from what it, people have been telling me and from what I've heard, you know, he, he seemed like a um, really good person. Because he he was just giving <laughs> he was giving cars away to a lot of people, and the cars he was giving away were Cadillacs. Because apparently they said Elvis he had a um, fond of Cadillacs. He really liked them, and I think that was like one of his favorite cars to drive around to have. So it, it's nice just seeing um, just famous people giving back, famous rich celebrity people just giving back to people that maybe didn't have anything, or to people that like came up with them. And helped them become the person they are today. So it's, it's it was um it was fun to watch part one. So now guys, let's just jump into part two. I don't know what it was, but basically he surprised them the day he was getting ready to leave. He called them into his room, told them to look out, and if I'm not mistaken, it was like the 15th floor. Told them to look out, and there we had cars parked for the nurses that he had arranged for. Just gave them cars. Uh, Hey, one thing I can tell about these pictures, Elvis had a unique style of fashion. That's one thing I can, uh, that I can say, especially back then around like the, between the 50s to the 70s. Um, you could definitely tell his style from like other celebrities during that time. He had like a, it, like I don't think I've ever seen anyone back in those days dress like that. To be honest with you, so I, I kind of like it. I kind of I liked how the different outfits that he went with and the different looks that he went with, too. I, I could definitely, um, like I said, I, I didn't see anyone back in those days dressed like that. just kind of said, you know, you people need a new car. I'd like you to have a Cadillac. And my mom said, oh, Elvis, we don't, you know, they, they protested, of course. But it was, you know, certainly something that my parents had never had. And so they were taken aback, and it was a huge deal in their lives. But, um, you know, the, just the generosity of spirit, I think, was appreciated more than the actual gift of the car. And this is her parents. And here's Lynn Thompson with Elvis Presley. I have the original title when it was registered to Lynn Thompson's parents and when Elvis Presley owned the car and when it was registered in his aunt's name. These are just letters. One letter is from Lynn Thompson's parents stating that the car did belong to Elvis Presley and also a certificate from the um, Department of Motor Vehicle stating that the car uh, also belonged to Elvis Presley. And this is just a picture of uh, when um, this car was auctioned off in... Uh, what? This is Elvis Presley's What? Uh, did y'all did y'all see that sign? What type of mess is that? <laughs> it said Linda's fifty thousand caddy from her pop star Sugar Daddy. I didn't even think they used those words like in those terms back then. I didn't know they even said Sugar Daddy. I didn't know that was like. I, I thought that word was like invented. What maybe like. 20, 30 years ago, I wasn't expecting them to use it back in, like, what, late 60s, early 70s. That's kind of different to think about, but I I think they misphrased that. Let's put it that way. I don't, I don't think that's what that was. Your, Sugar Daddy. This is Elvis Presley's 1971 um, Cadillac that I won in a raffle. I found out about the raffle from the Elvis Only Newsletter. Mm. That's a nice car. And I like to do charity work. And it makes me feel really good inside that I'm able to do something for 
a child or when I was doing it for the National Women's and Children's Center. With the car, I also did a, did a fundraiser for the Special Olympics, and I, I really uh, enjoyed that. It makes me feel good. It's wonderful to know that just because a car was given by Elvis Presley, that now it can generate income for charities. Elvis was very much like Santa Claus because he really derived more pleasure from giving than from receiving. The first one was a 63 in 1965. Before that, he gave me the motorcycle. He gave me that 67 Cadillac that he had, the El Dorado, the first year they came out with front wheel drive. And then in December of 70, he was my best man. And when we got married, he gave us a Mercedes 280 SE oh. for a wedding present. He gave me a 1973 El Dorado black on black Cabriolet. I mean, I was a recipient. Man, at least eight. that's what they like about Elvis. He was giving like the people that were close to him that like that he came up with. He, he gave back to him a lot. I think that was one of his close friends. He gave him. He said a Mercedes, a motorcycle, Cadillac, another car. After that, that he got married. I mean, he was like they said. I remember on the other lady, she said he would like to give more than receive, which is I guess a good quality in a person if you think about it. Especially if like they're able to give without like, you know, running low on their money and they're still able to do it, provide for other people. And it's not like those people just use them and keep asking and stuff for them. They maybe like never even asked for it, weren't even looking for it, and then that person just gave it out of the kindness of their heart. Um, I like people like that. Cause that really just shows what type of person you are inside and out. Over the years. 75, he gave the Lincoln to me. Mercedes. Another one. Three Cadillacs. In 76, in January, up in Vail, he gave my wife a 1976 Seville. God! Interior, baby blue top. Uh, Trans Am. She was just blown away by it, you know? That was her car, not mine. Her car. First Trans Am with a big engine. Hey, uh, had the big fire. He said that was her car, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> She did not let that man drive that car. You know, that was her car, not mine. Yep. Her car. <laughs> First Trans Am with a big engine, had the big Firebird on it. It's white with this big, beautiful blue Firebird. And I'd had it like a day, and I, I, I go out in front of the house in uh, Beverly Hills, and Lisa is about six years old, and she's peeling off the bird on my Trans Am. It's the first time I ever got mad at her. <laughs> when we were in Vail, uh, we befriended um, Captain Kennedy and Ron Petrofesso and a few people who worked for the Denver Police Department. They were just very super nice guys. We met them on the security deal when we played Denver, when we did the show there. So we got to be good friends with them. And whenever we were up there like in Vail or something, they were around. I was the commander of a number of bureaus uh, throughout my career. I was also off-duty work coordinator for the city facilities, so I had all the police at the concerts, the ball games, and everything else. So I brought my little entourage wow. of uh, policemen. He, he looks younger now than what he did back in then. To be honest with you, look like he's aging pretty well. Also off-duty work coordinator. Well, whenever this thing was filmed. Facilities, so I had all the police at the concerts, the ball games, and everything else. So I brought my little entourage of uh, policemen, half a dozen of us, to provide security on the floor to guard you know, Elvis's quarters there. We were at the Radisson Hotel in Denver, which was the home of the, uh, the Playboy Club at that time. And uh, we had either the 10th or 11th floor, and it was completely sealed off. Of course, Elvis came strolling out and shooting the breeze. I mean, he loved to tell jokes. He loved to hear jokes. He loved policemen. Mm -hmm. uh, he liked camaraderie, and uh, as well as he liked the girls, you know. So we had a good time. We became friends. He came back for personal rides in the police car. You know, their years went by. We went out to Las Vegas uh, to his shows, took the wives out there to Lake Tahoe. You know, it was fun. I mean, I was talking on the phone with my wife, and Elvis got on the phone and said hello to Joan, and he said, hey, I'm going to buy you a car like mine. I'm going to buy you a Lincoln. I said, oh, no, you're not. He said, yeah, I am. He said, I appreciate everything. 
that you've done and all your guys have done to make this visit uh, such a pleasant thing? He says, I appreciate it. And he says, I'm going to buy you a Lincoln. And uh, it wasn't maybe an hour or so later, he called me up to his room in, uh, in the house that he was renting in Vail, and we were sitting there talking. And he popped this question to me. He said, uh, you know, if you could buy any car in the world, what would you buy? And uh, I said, you know, I don't know. I'd probably buy a Cadillac. You know, and to me, in 1976, that was a, probably the best car that was on the road. And I mean, and that was a good I answer. Buy a Cadillac. He said, really? He said, any particular kind? And I said, probably an Eldorado. He picked that one and he bought that one for him. And then we took a spin around the block in the Lincoln. And then we headed out for Jack Ken Cadillac for these other Cadillacs for. Uh, for Ron and uh, Bob Cantwell and Joe Esposito's girlfriend and Red West's girlfriend and Colonel Parker. He ended up buying, I believe that night, six or seven Cadillacs. He bought Linda Thompson a new car that night. You know, and why he would buy one in Denver, Colorado. It was just, it was the thrill and the excitement of everybody being there. I mean, he could have bought it in California, he could have bought it in Memphis, but he wanted to buy it that night. Uh, I mean, he just, he went crazy with buying cars that night. And obviously the Cadillac dealership loved it. There was something that, you know, things just like that you hear about, you read about, and you're, it didn't, doesn't happen to you. I mean, you know, for a working policeman that, you know, I mean, I, it was just, it was overwhelming, to say the least. I mean, you know, somebody's going to buy you a Cadillac that probably at that point in my life was half my salary for the year. I mean, it was about know, 150 grand or whatever it was. It was big time money. You know, after he bought all those cars, I mean, he told me, he says, you know, Captain, he says, when my dad gets all those canceled checks, he's going to shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's another thing I'm thinking about. Since that one police officer, he said I was like half his salary, the car right there. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'm just like, I wonder how long they kept the cars, like if they kept it, drove it around for like a year or two, or did they just thank them for the gift and then did they resell it? Because I mean, that that could be money where they probably could have used for something else, maybe if they wanted to, but um, I'm going to be honest with y'all, seven cars in one day, that's a lot, I never, man. But now that I think about it, Elvis, he was like a big time name back in those days, so I'm pretty sure he was making a lot of money to afford that. 100% he he had to make a lot of money to afford that and um and also like the cars that he was giving them were like nice cars like a lot of these cars still hold up I want to say like yeah they're quite different than cars we see today but what I mean is that they um like you could definitely auction those cars and sell them for a lot of money because they're rare vehicles that aren't in stock today I think that's what I was trying to get at they don't hold up but they're they're rare cars, so if someone that's a car person, they see something like that on the road, they're going to be like, "Oh man, like that's that's a nice car." I think my grandpa, or grandma might have um, used to drive that, or maybe an older person might see that and be like, "Yeah, I used to drive that back in the day during my time." You know what I'm saying? So it, it could bring back good memories for some people. For the year, I mean, it was about I don't know, 150 grand or whatever it was. It was big time money. You know, after he that's bought a, all those cars, mm. I mean. Told me, he says, you know, Captain, he says, when my dad gets all those canceled checks, he's going to shit his pants. <laughs> I like that motorcycle. They still sell those today. I see a lot of people, like, if, they, if you go to a beach, I see a lot of people with those at the beach. This car came into my world in the strangest of circumstances. Uh, we were doing a broadcast, a morning broadcast on a Denver television station, uh, followed the Today Show on NBC. And we were sitting there in, in, in Vail watching the TV in the morning, and they were obviously doing a newscast about all these cars that had been purchased the day before. And my co-anchor at the end of the broadcast, in a little goodbye that we would do each day, she said, I'm going to go up to Aspen this weekend, and I hope that Elvis bumps into me. Now, there was an implication to that. First, Elvis was over in Vail, Colorado, not to matter. 
but the innuendo of what she said was just shattering. And I turned and looked at her and I said, what an inappropriate thing to say. Elvis started laughing. He said, Ron, do you know that guy? I said, yeah. I said, you know, I know who he is. He said, call him on the phone. Picked up the phone and the guy says, uh, what kind of car do you want? And I said, pardon me, who is this? And he said, uh, this is Elvis. And uh, of course, immediately I thought it was a practical joke, particularly from some friends at a other television station in town. Elvis had me the phone. He said, this guy doesn't believe it's me. So I got him back on the phone. I said, hey, Don, trust me, this is the real guy. He <laughs> says, Don, this is Petrofesso. He wants to give you a car, damn it. He goes, you got to be kidding me. I said, no, I'm not. I said, he was watching this morning, just happened to be watching the TV when you came on. And, and I said, he had us make the phone call for you. And then a little bit later, another voice appeared in another call. And he said he was a something at a Cadillac dealership. And which car did I want? And I said, well, what kind of car are we talking about? And he says, Cadillac. Uh, he says, the rule is you have to take one off the showroom floor. We have seven of them available. We have a blue one with a dark blue top, and we have a white one, and we have a pink one. What do you want? I said, I'll take the blue one. <laughs> Hung up. That afternoon, I went out, and this car was waiting for me, and I drove away. And I have to confess, my life was changed. And he still it has rolled it. on from there. Um, there were some very difficult days. Actually, the next year was rather difficult with regard to the car. One, a journalist should not accept a gift. Two, I was totally eclipsed as a newsman by the fellow who got the Cadillac from Elvis. And it became an emotional, an emotional burden. Just to show you how much people would attract to anything Elvis touched or was around. I mean, here was a car that belonged to me. He paid for it, but it was my car. It wasn't his car, it was mine. People want me to sign their baby's leg their wife's back with marking pens. You know, I was asking these people, what, you know, why, why do you want, this is, and their answer was, this is the closest that we could ever get to anybody that was that close to Elvis. It was an exciting time, and you know, I think I uh, had a pretty exciting career as a policeman. I made, you know, thousands of arrests and drug busts myself, but nobody remembers me for that. Oh, you're the guy that uh, Elvis gave a car to. And so, uh, that's the way that's been the story of my life since uh, you know 1976 and it still you know goes to this day I like that they really did a good job interviewing these people I kind of like the interactions like the stories these people are telling me right now it feels like <laughs> it feels like Elvis just like he just calls people that like like how that newsman, for instance, he was just watching the broadcast one morning, like what he saw, gave him a call, and they say, you know, the man got a Cadillac, which is crazy to me because I don't think I've ever heard a story, like a current story with a celebrity doing that within these past two or three years. So that was interesting to me. But yeah, so far, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I've seen that picture before. Elvis had two pairs of glasses that he gave my husband. And one time when my husband was leaving his, his house, uh, Elvis said, Ed, you forgot your glasses. And my husband said, those aren't my glasses, they're yours. He said, they have your initials. Like my TCB, that's there forever. Taking care of business, lightning fast. It was the first one, because I happened to be with him when we picked him up down there at the jewelry store in Beverly Hills. And he put it on my neck there in the shop, in their store. And he put one on himself. 
Uh, he had had a, some, like a dozen, I think it was, that were made up. He was really thinking about just us guys that were with him at the time and our wives. And then he would give them away to celebrities. They would remark about it. And uh, he tried to take mine one time and I wouldn't let him have it. He wanted to give it to some celebrity. I don't know who it was. And I said, no. And he said, what do you mean, no? I'll get you another one. And I said, no, you can't get me another one. Elvis, this is very special to me. It's the first one and uh, that you gave out, and I want to keep it. I'm going to keep it. He said, that, that, uh, they're all alike. I said, no, they're not. And I said, now, if you want me to not wear this so that you don't ask me for it, I won't wear it, Elvis. He said, no, no, I'll go ahead and wear it. And uh, later on, I went to him. I said, Elvis, I hope you're not angry about that, man. And he said, no, hell no. He said, uh, I know what you mean. And he said, no, I appreciate that. I know. And that was it. He never asked me for it again. The first gift Elvis ever gave me was a beautiful diamond cross. And it's, it's in an old fashion looking mounting. It's very beautiful and I wear it occasionally. The second gift he ever gave me was uh, the car. And then the third gift he gave me was my TLC chain. And of course I wear this all the time. And, and it has both of our names on the back of it and the day he gave it to me. And then for Christmas that year he gave me a 21 carat aquamarine ring. He gave me a mink coat and it's silver gray, and he said, this is to match your hair. He was always giving gifts, always. And so, and so he brought the, the mink coat to my house, and I was very... Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that ended pretty quick. I wasn't expecting that. But, um... But yeah, that was the end of part two of the series. I think the ending was like a little bit weird because I guess they cut off like a weird point, but I'm definitely going to react to part three and part four and get those out for y'all. I really enjoyed part two. Like I said, this is more so storytelling about the stories and um, how, why Elvis gave away Cadillacs, why he gave away like the chains, why he gave away, um, why he gave away um, the, her, his personal nurse, the fur coat, a chain, a cross and then a Cadillac and I think something else I forgot what the fifth one was but it, it was just people that were close to him and some people that were distant people that he really didn't even know that well he was giving them gifts so it was just great to learn about that again great to hear about it hear the stories hear the people that he gave the gifts to and the crazy thing to me is that mostly every single last one of them kept the gift that means that it meant something to him like, if someone gives you something now these days, like, I feel like if you don't actually like it and you know you're not going to see the person for, like, another, like, you, you probably won't ever see them again or you might, you won't see them, like, every other year or so like that. Most people would probably, they might not keep it. They might sell it or give it away or something like that. By I me, mean, back in those days, people were keeping the cars. I'm pretty sure if, if a celebrity gave someone a car now, most people will sell it, take the money, go put it on their house or put it on something like that. They wouldn't keep the car, but that one, um, I think he was like a, he was not a teleporter, but he was like one of those news guys, a uh, news reporter. He, you still saw the car that Elvis had gave him. He had kept that car, which is great. It's great to see, but at the same time, I just don't think people these days will do that, so... It's just great to see people, like, cherish the gifts that people gave them. So, now, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the end of this video. I enjoyed it, like I said. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because it's your boy, Keesy. And Paulie, gang, 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 gang. Yo, we out.